Good evening. I want to thank IFF for allowing me to be here and speak to you all tonight. Tonight is about heroes, amazing children who have demonstrated incredible courage and strength while facing difficult treatments for life-threatening diagnoses. Tonight is also about choices. My hero is my daughter, Caitlin. She's been my hero since she was diagnosed January 13th, 2012. And she has continued to inspire my family and others since she earned her angel wings on November 11th of that same year. On a Sunday night in January, I watched as her eyes crossed. It had happened several times that day. Over the next four days, they continued to cross more often. She held her head in an odd way. She became clumsy. And on January 13th, 2012, my family was handed devastating news that would change our happy family forever. We sat across from a pediatric neuro-oncologist as she explained that our daughter had a rare pediatric brain tumor called diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma, or DIPG for short. We were devastated a second time when we asked what treatment she would receive. We were told she could get palliative radiation therapy to buy us some time. I never dreamed my husband and I would encounter the decisions we did during and since that dreadful day of diagnosis. Choices parents shouldn't have to make. Choices parents shouldn't have to think about. In a single day, we went from making decisions about play dates and sports to deciding how we were gonna to explain to our other children and our own parents that our sweet, beautiful, full of life daughter had a brain tumor with a 100% fatality rate. We never thought we would have to decide whether or not we would consent to a dangerous biopsy. We were asked to sign a living will for our daughter. Decisions that are unfair for a parent to have to make for their own child. In April, we were given the opportunity to enroll Caitlin in a groundbreaking phase one clinical trial in New York, a trial that was made possible by funding from IFF. Would we enroll her in this clinical trial? Would we allow our daughter to be the first human participant, let alone child, in this surgical clinical trial? Our choice was yes. We understood that we were signing her up to participate in a research study, but in our hearts, we hoped we were signing her up for a miracle. We also knew the results of the trial would help children to come after Caitlin. She did very well. And for brief moments, I thought that maybe our child would be the miracle child to survive this horrible tumor. Ultimately, the assurances we were given came true and Caitlin died less than 10 months after being diagnosed. She was five years old. Five is too young. My hope is that this was Caitlin's life's work to help contribute to finding a cure. And I will be forever grateful to IFF for funding research that was so unknown so early on. The trial has been successful um, in meeting all of its initial goals. To date, there hasn't been a single adverse reaction to the treatment. It's been extended to um, higher dose levels and more participants. And the next phase is currently being uh, mapped out while they're growing DIPG cell lines in a laboratory setting, which is impressive. I thank IFF and my hero, Caitlin, for being a part of that progress. It went beyond our comprehension that we would have to make impossible decisions in Caitlin's last few days. 
When should we call the rest of the family to come say goodbye to her? Should we bring our daughter home or should we place her in an inpatient hospice setting? Would we donate her tumor to research? Where would we place that tiny body when she died? How would we help our children and each other survive the biggest heartache that our hearts would ever know? Difficult choices, impossible decisions, ones that no parent should ever have to confront. We were going to make the choice to be very quiet and shut down. We were not going to share our daughter's diagnosis or her treatment or what our family was going through. But how could we stay quiet about a disease that had seen no change in nearly 50 years? We decided that if parents before us would have stood up and opened up, if they would have shared, maybe our daughter would still be here today. So we decided not to sit by quietly and idly while innocent children were allowed to suffer with rare and incurable brain tumors. My family decided to be a part of the united voice that's reaching out and fighting back. We all have a choice to do something now. We have a decision to make. My family wasn't given a choice in Caitlin's diagnosis. And her outcome was guaranteed without question. The families you've seen tonight in the video didn't have a choice for their child's diagnosis. The Yagodas don't have a choice. But what the Cox family and the Goss family, the Sugarmans, the Cullens, the Foremans, the Yorks, the Downings, and the Yagodas have chosen to do is to help make a difference for other families that find themselves catapulted into this same fight. Tonight, we all can make a difference. We can help change the future for children that are yet to be diagnosed. We can set a course of action into motion by making the choice to raise your paddle and donate tonight. By making that choice, you'll impact the number of parents that will have to make decisions and determinations like we had to. By joining IFF's efforts tonight, Children will have options for treatments through advancements in research. And tonight, by making the choice to be a part of something so important to me, you may not get a red cape, but you will walk out of here a hero too. Thank you.